Welcome to another episode of DD on the Spot. As always, I'm your host, Ryan Johnson. And before I get to our guest today, well, first of all, everyone should recognize our guest. We have Cassidy back on the podcast again. She was on here, I don't know how much longer ago, probably I'd say at least half a year or so ago, maybe maybe a little bit more longer, maybe a little bit shorter, but she's back on now to, I mean, I know that when we first talked to her, she hadn't competed in her bodybuilding show yet, and she's already competed in one, and she's getting ready for another one, so we'll talk to her about that. But again, everyone, if you enjoy this content, please give a like and subscribe down below. I greatly appreciate it. But Cassidy, it's been a while since we've talked to you, so why don't you give us a little bit of an update on what your life's been like since you've last talked to us? Yeah, so last time we spoke, I was in my first prep for the Coburg Naturals that happened April 13th. I don't think I was like super deep in the grind yet. I think things are just starting to get pretty real because it was after Christmas. And that's kind of when my coach and I were like, all right, we got to start really dialing things in. Uh, We started carb cycling, which was an experience. Um, Got to learn how sensitive I was to carbs mood wise and everything. And my uh, poor husband also got to experience that as well. Um, appreciation shout out to her husband, everyone just, just yeah, right off the bat. Yeah. Husband Jordan, who <laughs> dealt with my low carb weeks. Um, yeah. So then I ended up, so I ended up doing quite well, um, for my first show ever. I got first call outs on both my categories, which was true novice and bikini medium tall. So in true novice, I got third and, in bikini medium tall, I got fifth. Uh, and now we're prepping for the uh, Berry Naturals, which is July 27th, literally the weekend before the Toronto Pro Qualifier. <laughs> wow, that's that's awesome. I mean, yeah, and right before the Toronto Pro Qualifier, well, at least you'll be in the at least you'll have the look then basically down so you don't have to do anything else. But one of the things that I really found interesting just following your story is just because you were basically the first guest that I've had on that hadn't competed in a show yet. So we got to see what it was like for someone before they competed. What was that like, especially during those last few months when you really got to see your body take on the most drastic changes as opposed to when we first talked to you? I mean, like you said, you really started to take things up a notch. What was that like seeing your body transform? Uh, yeah, it was pretty crazy. Uh, watching your body go through those changes but what was even more crazy was actually looking back at pictures afterwards and seeing that progress because I find that during it you're you're assessing yourself thoroughly every single day so it's really hard to see those little changes until like even post show you go and you look back at all the millions of photos that you have on your phone (laughs) of yourself half naked and you're like, okay. (laughs) And I was looking and looking and I was like, wow, I could really tell between this week and this week, there is like a drastic change. Um, and then the biggest thing, the difference was, uh, my coach and I do water manipulation. So we did do, um, the water loading where I was for a week drinking eight liters of water. And then we started, yeah. Um, that was really, that was hard. Uh, But eventually you kind of get used to it. It wasn't like as bad near the end, but it was unfortunate because by the time you get used to eight liters, you're already at the end of that week and now you're starting to cut. Um, So we cut water and then that's when I really noticed um, just my definition really starting to come out. Uh, And then the tan, the tan just changes everything, especially for me. I'm, I'm very fair skinned. So, uh, the moment that tan went on me, I couldn't believe it. My dad was with me and he's like, I've never seen you like, obviously competition tans are extremely dark, but yeah, even my own husband was like, you look like a completely different person, (laughs) you know? Even I say I was at a twins game a couple of weeks ago and I was only in the sunlight for about 15 minutes because with my skin tone, you know, I, it's gotta be tickets in the shade. Otherwise I'm not going. I always tell my friends that 15 minutes and I'm still peeling off skin right now on my, on my, on my arm from just being in the sun for 15 minutes. So yeah, I can, I can totally understand where you're coming from, but yeah, that tan is just ridiculous. Did you struggle with the fact that, I mean, you basically have to be a statue. You can't really sit on anything. You can't really sit, lean against anything. I would say the tanning experience almost made me never want to do a show again. Um, because of how fair I am and I didn't tan ahead of time or, um, 
just because you're already spending so much money for competition tan. I didn't want to go get additional spray tans ahead of time. And I didn't want to subject myself to like UV and everything like that just because uh, my skin freckles. Like, so if I were to try and tan too much, I would get a lot of age spots and a lot of freckling. And like, I just was like off for like two shows or whatever. Like I'm, I can survive. Um, but yeah, they had to throw on a lot of coats, you know, if almost like you're lining up, you're waiting. And then once you get in there, you're stripped completely naked in front of 20 other competitors. Um, and it's just like, and, and, and absolute touch, like the workers were so lovely. Like they were super respectful. They were, you know, trying to make it as less awkward and, and, you know, as comfortable as possible. But in the end for me, it was just by that point, you're tired, you're hungry, you're thirsty, you're just, you've like had enough, you're nervous. And then to see now your competition in the room naked <laughs> in front of you, um, wondering, oh, is that, I wonder if she's figure or bikini or she's in my class, whatever. Um, and then the spray tan's cold. Everyone's body fat is so low at that point. So you're freezing in there. There's fans in there. The spray tan application, so like almost like being airbrushed, uh, is freezing. It's just it was, and and then having to like turn and stand still for like 45 minutes. Yeah, I even get shivers just even thinking about that. And everyone out there, yeah, I could I totally understand. I mean, when you have that type of skin tone, the sun is not your friend. And yeah, I I mean even today a day like today is absolutely perfect for me where it's cloudy where like I can actually go out and enjoy the day as opposed to you know just getting absolutely blanketed but what was that experience like for you when you because I always like to ask you know what it's like when the competitors get to step on stage and show off all that hard work what was that like for you when you got to step on stage was it just really nerve-wracking ahead of time and did it get easier once you stepped on stage what was that like when you finally got to after all this long hard time of prepping and getting ready for it when you finally got to go up on stage what was that feeling like so I want to start by saying I'm really happy that I went into the true novice category because I was hella nervous. It was bad. I like almost tripped when I walked down on stage. I was bouncing too much on my heels. I was definitely super nervous. Uh, like I almost had like clouded vision. I was just like, it, it, I wasn't in the moment. Uh, but the second time I went on stage, when I was in my open category, I felt way more confident. I had fun. I knew my routine way better. Um, but yeah, I would say like my first time, I kind of screwed the pooch a little bit. And by a little bit, my coach and I will agree it was pretty bad uh, to a point where I refused to watch videos of myself on my first routine because it was that bad. Uh, but the second one wasn't too terrible. Like it, it was, it was significantly better, but it, this is actually kind of a reason why I really want to do Barry is because I want to prove to myself that I could do better than what I brought to Coburg. And, um, and if I do place top three, uh, in open and I can go to qualify, that's great. But ultimately Barry is going to be for me. It's like my redemption show because I know that I brought a really great physique to the stage, but I just feel like my head wasn't in the game. I felt like I wasn't, I didn't bring the best to the stage in terms of my posing and what I could uh, show the judges. So that's kind of why Barry is like, nah, I can do this. You know, I have more to offer. I worked so hard for this. You know, it's going to be a whole, it's going to be like a year come November that I've been really working towards this goal. So, yeah. Yeah, that that's amazing. And just, I mean, I always got to tell, you know, all the comparisons too, just to be able to get on that stage. I mean, that's a goal enough in and of itself. And that should be just, you know, an end all goal just because so many people just don't realize what you guys go through. But since we did talk before you really got into the really thick of the prep, what was the biggest nutritional change that you had to make that you really took the most of you to get used to? Like in terms of, uh, sorry, do you mind like repeating? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, everyone, I love being that she's Canadian. She always has to say sorry before, before every, I, I, that's why I love having the Canadian guests on. Cause they're all, Oh, sorry. Sorry. Was that? So no, again, that's the whole Canadian thing that I just absolutely love. But, 
when it came to your nutrition diet, or I mean your prep diet, see, you know, I'm getting all tied up. When it came to your prep diet, what was the biggest nutritional change that you had to make that you found most difficult? Uh, I would say um, just being on such a strict, you know, like here are your carbs, here's your protein, here's your fats. You know what I mean? You're almost just like on being on a strict meal plan in general has is like proves to be quite difficult. Uh, you know, I would say that, you know, a lot of social events go hand in hand with food. And then when you're trying to go out with friends or family events, you're like, great, I can't eat any of your food. I can only eat mine. And, you know, you, you don't. And then once you're done your one meal, and everyone else is still snacking on everything else, you kind of have to awkwardly be like, all right. But I would say this prep, um, I've picked up on a lot of tricks and hacks and ways to keep myself full and happy even during those events. Like even something as like cucumbers, like or like kind of like more free foods for me that I could pack with me or um just kind of plan ahead. So if I know I'm going out with friends, I'll try and make sure that my meals before I hang out with my friends are pushed a little bit longer out in between. So that way, when I go hang out with my friends, maybe over that, like, you know, hangout session, I'll have like two meals. So I'm keeping myself nice and full. Um, Diet pop as much as I like to cut it out as much as I can before the show, just because like, aspartame and I can sometimes not be BFFs. It's still like, you know, Coke Zero is like my best friend when I'm out with friends and everyone's drinking. Like, Coke Zero is like my life. Um, also, yeah, just things like that is little things. Yeah. Can I just say how great it is that she, that she called it pop because I've been so used to some of these East coast people that you call it, you know, soda or they call soda, it. Yeah. yeah uh, just being from the Midwest. Yeah. Pop is what it's called. So yeah, when I heard a call, I was like, okay, even the Canadians call it pop. That's, that's, oh, yeah. that, that's the way, that's the way it needs to be. But, and I got to say too, when you're going out to the, you might not be the waiters or the waitress or the waiters favorite person, because I mean, if you're only getting water, you're not going to really get a nice, a nice tip for them. That's, that's one thing that I found out. But for me, one of my hacks, I mean, this isn't going to work for you because it's not really healthy. I don't think for a prep, but those freezies that they give out at like cub foods, those the, the, for like the summertime, those like flavored freezies that are about like, I don't know if you have them in Canada, but they're like that big and they're like that thick. And they're like, or they're like every types of flavor and you just put them in your freezer and then they freeze up and then they're like a slushy kind of thing. Oh my, I literally, but here's the thing though. I have so many of them and they're all sugar though. So that's the only, that's the only problem. But I have a, I have an intensity job where, I mean, I'm, I'm, I, I help out now, especially during the summer when we're low short staffed, where I help out, you know, unloading and loading trucks. You know, that's probably about like half my job now, as opposed to what it was before, which is like supervising, but just cause we need the labor, but I'll come home and it's gotten to a point where I even need to wear gloves because they're so cold and I hold on to them for so long. Cause I have so many of them that my hands would start to like freeze. So I got to wear gloves now when eating them just so that my hands don't get cold. But yeah, I, I live on those things basically during the summer time. But now, do you have any fun prep brain stories or funny prep brain stories? Because for so many people out there, I like, I'll like i just explain a little bit. When you're that depleted, your mind plays tricks on you like we heard from her before. I mean, her poor husband has to, you know, take the brunt of, you know, and we, we always hear it's always the husbands or the spouses that, you know, have to have to deal with that. But have, has there been any funny stories like you forgot your car keys or any just, just simple things where you're just like, oh, prep brain? Uh, Yeah, I put my phone in the fridge a couple of times. For sure. Cause like, you know, you're going to make a meal and your phone's in your hand, you like swap it out. Um, I would say for the most part, um, I would try and listen to my body. Like, so my root, like near the end, I'd say like the last three weeks of my first prep, it was a pretty, like I was still working nights and that was really tough. So, and I was just this like straight night shift nurse and that was getting really hard on my body. Um, but I would have a routine where, like, on my days off, I would go in, do my weight tr- weight training in the morning, come home, eat, nap, wake up, go do my hit cardio and, like, the rest of my cardio, come home, nap again, eat, and then, honestly, eat again, and then go right to bed. And I was, like, doing that. And then when I would be working nights, I would have to, like, flip it all around. Minus the fact that I still had to do weight training in the mornings. So sometimes instead of that being my morning, it was actually my night. And I would, it would be right when I'd get off work, I would have to go meet my coach, 
do my weight training on zero stimulants because I'd have to come home and sleep. It was awful. And I think that's actually like looking back, I think that's why I had such a hard time losing weight. And that's why we had to really dial my carbs super low near the end and why my calories were like, they weren't dangerously low. Like I'd say they were like 1450 near the end, which is like pretty yeah. standard for bikini athletes. Um, they weren't below like 1200 or anything like that. And my cardio was about, mm, I would say like anywhere between like 50 to like, like there, yeah, it was like, no, it was over an hour actually. I was, I was at the hour 20 mark near the end. Um, but this prep, I am at like 1700 calories. So my carbs are actually at 150 grams a day still. Um, and my cardio is anywhere between like half an hour to 45 minutes, depending on how hard I go. Cause my coach is just like, yeah, just burn a total of like 500 calories. I don't care. So long as you do 50 minutes worth of that 500 calories, it's hit training just to like keep the muscle. Uh, I don't care what you do. Um, my biggest feedback with Coburg was to build my glutes. So you bet I am on that Stairmaster <laughs> plucking away at that. Um, and actually the summer though, I've been doing a lot of running outside just cause the weather has been so nice and I used to run all the time and it's just a really great way to get lost and to not be focusing so much on time and more on how you feel and pushing yourself. Get and that fresh air too, which is really important. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of nice hills near the area I live. So what I'll do is like, there's this one really big hill, especially, and I'll just like sprint up that hill for 15, like back and forth for that 15 minutes of time. And then I count that as my hit and then continue my steady state run afterwards. So, yeah. That's awesome. But I got to ask, because you are a night shift worker and because I too work nights now, I don't work like the extreme nights where, I mean, I, I go from 4 p.m. to midnight usually, or sometimes we get off a little earlier. Sometimes I get off, you know, as early as like 10 o'clock, but still, you know, it can be hard to maintain a regular sleep schedule when you're going to bed a little bit later. How were you able to do, I mean, I know you said like you took a lot of naps, but still just, I can't imagine, you know, after your shift going and working out and then going back and getting some sleep, how were you able to do that? Were you just a stimulant fiend basically? Um, it was a lot of like, just pushing myself mentally and to a point where post show. So from mid April, when I was done the show to, uh, I would say end of May mentally, I was a mess because I was not only going through the post show, bit of weight gain, a little bit of, um, just feeling a bit lost with my goals, trying to figure out kind of what do I do now? And this was then while I was planning, like, like just while I was trying to figure out, cause like, even when I knew I was going to compete in Barry, um, there is still that time where you're like that in between time where you're not in prep yet, but you don't want to go too crazy because you know, you're about to hop in prep again. But then at the same time, your coach is like, make sure you're eating and you're like, ah, but weight gain and like, and then the lack of sleep and everything like that. I almost had to take a leave from work. I was very, I was in a really dark place. Like, um, I was crying a lot. Like once again, like my husband was absolutely amazing throughout everything, but especially in that month when I was, I would say like not to throw around the depression word, but I could probably easily say I was situationally depressed during that month. I felt isolated. I didn't, I actually like didn't even know how to reach out to friends anymore because I was just so used to this routine that kept me so busy that I didn't know how to socialize again, you know? So that was also hard, but I actually ended up getting switched to a day shift, which was godsend. Um, and another reason why I think this prep is going way easier because I'm actually sleeping, you know, I'm sleeping. And that's one thing I know like that, that, people often forget with prep is yes, you can follow your diet to a T, you can do all your cardio, you could be lifting super great in the gym, um, all that stuff. But if you're not sleeping, you aren't going to get the optimal results that that you you would otherwise because your cortisol levels will be elevated, like you know, you'll be super stressed, you know, it, it's just yeah, it's crazy. And I yeah. Like I said, I think that's why my calories are still really high right now. 
feel amazing. I'm dropping weight. I'm still holding on to muscle and I'm bringing a whole new package to the stage, like a whole new shape, a whole like fuller look. And like, I just feel amazing, you know? Yeah. And that's so awesome. And I always say one of the most important things is the sleep because I mean, you could have the hardest workout of all time. And if you get the proper amount of sleep, I mean, I always say that's one of the best feelings in the world is if you wake up after getting a good amount of sleep after a really hard and long day working out. I mean, that's, I mean, you feel like a superhero almost and you feel like you could conquer anything. So yeah, that is just so important. And it's so great that, you know, you talked about, you know, the post-show blues, because a lot of people, they, they don't understand that going ahead of time and just going through that. But what have been some ways that you have mixed up your training since your first prep? Did you mix things up at all or have you stuck with the same basic training plan or how have things differed? So my coach and I were seeing each other five days a week uh, throughout all of my prep. Uh, and then when, so the three weeks that I kind of was like my very, very, very short but sweet off season, I will say of three, three and a half weeks. Uh <laughs> I was still seeing my coach twice a week. We were doing uh, one conditioning day, which is, in my opinion, the hardest day that we do. Um, but it's the reason why all my coaches' athletes are athletic. Like, we're very athletic-based. Like, my resting heart rate, I got a new Garmin watch that was my birthday gift to myself. Uh, it's the best purchase I've ever, like, no, not, no, no sponsor. But having a fitness tracker watch is literally the best thing I could have gotten myself. It has changed, like, just so much for me. But, yeah, my resting heart rate is in the 50s. But it's because my coach is very adamant on making us athletic and training us to push ourselves and, and to really um, build muscle in different ways than just picking things up and putting them down, like functional training, right? Um, it's also nice that he can like physically be there to see us and not just give us plans. Like, so that way, once I started seeing him again, five days a week, uh, again, like it was nice because he was able to look at me and be like, yep, we need to focus more on this and that. Um, but before I was seeing him and I was only seeing him twice, twice a week, my husband and I were working out together, which was fun. Um, I, I saw some of your posts where you had you and your husband working out together and I was like, oh, that's nice. Yeah, it was great. It, it actually makes us look it, like he's super excited for the show, but also excited for after because he's been going to the gym all the time. Now he comes in the mornings with me. I was going to say, he looks like he's in great shape too as well. That's what I, one thing I was saying from the post. Yeah. Yeah. He's super, super into fitness as well. Um, and yeah, we're both really excited to work out again together. Um, here and there, we actually signed up for Tough Mudder, which is like a, are you familiar with Tough Mudder? Oh, yeah. I, I, I had an ex-girlfriend who wanted me to try to do one. And I said that, that was probably one of the reasons why we ended up breaking up probably in my opinion, <laughs> but no, but no, yeah, I have, I have friends that go through that and do that. And then I was like, Hey, I mean, I, I, that's another thing too, where I, I, I need to start actually, thanks for giving me that idea because actually I yeah. need to have some tough mutters on here, but yeah, that's for anyone out there, go and look it up. It is, it is unbelievable what they, what they go through, but yeah. So when is the date of the tough mutter? Uh, it's mid September, September 15th We're and it's, which is great because it's kind of like a, another goal to work towards once I'm done the show. Um, because after this show, I am taking a very long, much needed improvement season, even to a point where I don't have any plans. I don't have like a date to work towards. It's just working on myself, eating, like go, going back to maintenance calories, because I have to find out what that is again. And they often say that you like for how long you've been dieting, that's how long you should be eating in uh, in your maintenance or surplus, just especially for women, for us to uh, find homeostasis and to find balance with our homo hormones and everything like that. Because my husband and I are also hoping to maybe have a kid at some point in the next like year or two. So um, that's also another factor, like maybe I'll go back to the stage once I'm, you know, once we have a child and cause I know a lot of moms do that. And I think that would be fun. I'm definitely, like, this is not going to be my last show. I am addicted to the stage. I love the stage, but the stage will always be there. And that's what I have to tell myself. Oh, 100%. And she's also a singer too, which we'll talk about in a little bit. So, I mean, the stage, the stage is basically 
like when she says she's addicted to it, I mean, yeah, 100%. But one thing that I found interesting is before we started recording this, you were talking about how one of the guests that we had on before, Celeste, uh, she has a podcast or she has, uh, uh, is it a podcast? Yeah. Yeah. So she has, so she has a podcast. So why don't you tell us a little bit more about that? And we'll obviously we'll give it a plug and I'll leave a link to all that down below because you said that you have really, it's been a really great thing for you to listen to that podcast. Oh man. So so it's called confessions of a bikini pro. Um, and so I found that randomly because, um, there's a couple competitors that I follow on Instagram that she had interviewed and they were, they were kind of sharing it. I'm also in a support group on Facebook where people were saying, oh, y'all, you need to like totally look at this. You need to listen to it. Really great for cardio sessions. Um, so for me, actually, listening to people talk during hit cardio is, doesn't work for me. But when I'm doing my steady state or walking or even like my morning routine, I'm just eating, doing my makeup. I always have her on. Celeste is my best friend when I'm listening, when I'm doing my makeup and getting ready for the day. Uh, but I just love hearing and and feeling as a competitor as well like you feel so validated when you're hearing the pros talk about their experiences with maybe similar things that you're going through or even like hearing their tips and tricks like um a couple of the girls were mentioning um this was mentioned a few times uh cucumbers stevia and cinnamon that has probably been like my biggest savior this prep like you can ask my husband I'm pretty sure at our local grocery store I'm known as cucumber girl because I think every week I go in there and I buy like seven cucumbers because I just eat them like I probably have like one or two like I easily have two a day like just to like keep me going because it's just water right but because I have such a bad sweet tooth but like just like little tips and tricks like that um and then Celeste also, what I really enjoy about her is she has such a great knowledge and her background just and her own personal experiences with the post-show blues and being um, building more than just a body. You know, that's like her slogan. And that really resonates with me because um, I mentioned in our first podcast uh, episode that I um, have struggled in high school with eating disorders and body dysmorphia. And uh, I am very worried about what my post-show after Barry is going to be like for me because it's going to be watching yourself go from the most shredded you've ever been to now finding health. Um, so I actually reached out to Celeste and we'll, we'll hopefully be working together um, in my improvement season and she'll be supporting me and helping me through my mental, you know, my just like my mental state and just kind of giving me some tips and tricks and I'm really excited to work with her. That's awesome. And if you go, if you come on the podcast or if you go on her podcast, yeah, I'd, I'd love to give it a shout out and give it a listen to. So everyone confessions of a bikini pro. Yeah. I highly, highly recommend everyone go out there and check it out. I'll leave a link to it down below, but as we draw nearer to the competition, have you gotten to the point now where you're starting to cut down on things or is that a few weeks ahead of time? So it's funny you mentioned that my coach literally two days ago is like, yep, we're cutting your carbs next week. And I'm like, ah. all right. <laughs> so, um, but then he saw me yesterday um, and he's like, oh, maybe we don't need to, but I know him. He probably will. And it's fine because we went this whole prep and I'm going to be four weeks out tomorrow. So it was time. I knew it was coming. I knew to, to, you know, as much as I didn't want it to happen, I knew it was coming at some point. Um, but that is honestly the best way my body responds is carb cycling. Like I'm very carb sensitive. Um, so even like vascularity wise, like I'm a oatmeal queen. It is my, uh, carb of choice always. Um, that and sweet potato, obviously everyone loves sweet potato, but oatmeal for me is just the best. Um, yeah, I get those crazy oatmeal pumps with uh, my bicep vein and like all my forearms and everything like that. Just like, so just like, oh, hello. <laughs> they come out <laughs> and play. Um, that's actually one big thing I noticed as prep over the last one is I'm way more vascular and my body is responding to those uh, food cues and those uh, triggers way faster and more efficiently than my first prep. 
what has your friends and family's reaction been since, I mean, the last time we talked, you, you really, before you really got into the really big thick of things in your first prep, but what was their reaction like as you went through your journey? Um, they were always quite supportive. Like I would say that I didn't like, I don't really have any negative experience other than some D bags at the gym. You kind of get some people who, um, especially like in the winter time when I was always doing my cardio and sweaters, like you just look like a skinny person on a skinny person on a treadmill. When everyone else is just getting their winter weight and everything. Yeah. <laughs> I literally had this guy come up to me and be like, Hey, like, you know, cardio is really great and all, but if you want to build some muscle, you should go lift some weight. I literally just unzipped my sweater, took it off. And this was, I was like two weeks out at this yeah. point. So I was like, Pfft. And he just walked away. And I was like, yep, just, yeah. Hey, you didn't even have to say anything. That's no. the body, the body, the, the body was your one answer. Yeah. It was, uh, it was, instead of a mic drop, it was a sweater drop. It was, <laughs> yep. <laughs> Any more questions? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. But other than that, like my family and friends are so supportive and they're so excited. And even when they found out I was doing another show, they're like, oh, that's so cool. And, and, uh, I have. Um, some family still coming up for this one, which is nice. It's a little bit closer to home for me because I am a northerner and Barry's north. So, yeah. What food are you most looking forward to having after your show? I'm trying my best not to focus on that. And, and it's because I noticed that if I make it so food focused post show, like, I don't want to go crazy. Like, I generally enjoy all the food that I'm eating on my prep. Like, I really do. Like, if if I weren't on prep, I think the only thing that would be different is once in a while, I'd go out for dinner with my husband and my friends. I would have a glass of wine here and there at social occasions, like little things like that. Like, if there was apps on the table, I would have one or two, you know, like, like I miss crackers. Like I love crackers. I can't eat crackers right now unless I want to waste my carbs for the day on crackers, which is ridiculous and not worth it because oatmeal is obviously the better choice. Anyway, (laughs) but essentially just like having a bit more food freedom in that department. But other than that, like I'm probably still going to meal prep for sure. Definitely going to still, you know, aim for high protein, decent amount of carbs and fats. Um, but even like post show, like I remember last time I was like, yeah, I want Timbits. I want to like go out and I want to like splurge. But I think this time around, I'm just going to like feel it out. Like once I'm done the show, it's like, hey, yeah, let's like go out to a restaurant. And I'm not going to feel like guilty if it's like the first thing I'm craving is like a salad. Like I love taco salads so much. Like, you know, when they come in like the burrito bowl, you know, like the actual like, um, like the corn chip bowl and stuff. Like, it, I generally like that to me, I'd love that. Or like sushi, things like that. I'm just not gonna, I, I don't want to fall into the whole like post-show binge and be like, yes, this is totally fine because it's, it's really not healthy for you. And it's not to knock on anyone who does that. Like when you work so hard, like you do you, you totally do you. But um, I think this time around, because I know I don't have another show to prep for after this. I just really want to be cautious and careful about my decisions food wise. And how, how was your, was, I mean, like you said, you might, you were thinking about taking a leave from work. How how were you able to go through work and, and deal with people, especially when you're in your prep brain? Because for me, I mean, just normally I have a hard time dealing with some of the people that I have to deal with at my work. But then if I was on a prep, I mean, that would just be absolutely horrible. Did it just take a lot of mental patience to just not just want to explode at some people at, at your job? Oh, for sure. Like even as a nurse, like before prep, it constantly like that. But I would say more so on my low carb weeks, it was like, "Mm." all right, especially since I worked with a, you know, um, a 14 month old baby. And, you know, but he's such a good baby. Like he, if anything, actually, I should, I want to like take that comment away because he would actually make me happier. I would go into my shift and such a bad mood. And he would make me so happy. Like I would just feel so blessed that I can look after this child who has recovered and been through so much and is on the mend because as a community nurse, we see clients outside of the hospital, meaning that they're hopefully getting better. 
So he, him and his family, um, were so kind and they were very, they knew I was competing and they were always asking about it. So they were really involved that way, which helped tremendously. Um, whereas I actually am leaving the company I'm with now and I just got my dream job, uh, which is I'm going to be a labor and delivery nurse at a hospital here in Toronto. Uh, and once again, though, uh, the person who hired me knows I'm a bodybuilder and she knows I'm in prep right now, but, um, I don't know. I just, it's definitely just going to be one of those things where it's like mind over matter. Got to just push through it. And it's like when you're in cardio and you're like five minutes in, you're like, well, I have another half an hour and I really don't want to do this, but let's just do it. And it's kind of the same way with everything else in your life. You just got to be like, well, let's just hold the tongue, do the best we can do. And yeah. I'm sorry. I was just thinking about that video that they had us watch in high school, that birthing video. And I was like, God, she wants to do a job where she sees that all the time. Oh, yeah. I'm not thinking about throwing yeah. up just what, just thinking about that. Vi- no, but yeah, that's the one that was the, I remember that was the one day where everyone left the classroom and they're like, okay, we're all going to wear protection now. No one's going to, I mean, everything <laughs> biggest contraceptive. That's the biggest contraceptive message. I think that's ever been made is make every teenager watch that video. But yeah, I mean, that's, and that and that's just so great that you're able to do that. But I did have one guest who had the ultimate job for being on prep. She photographed and videoed puppies for Animal Planet for their shows. So I was like, okay, that's the one job where that's not even a job. Okay, you could never be pissed off doing that job. Where then yeah. she's like, yeah, and they let us play with them. They let us do like everything. And so I was like, okay, I would go on a prep if I knew that I that I had that as a job. Like I could, yeah. I could, I could get zero amount of sleep. And if I knew I was going to play with puppies, you know, everything, everything would be fine. But yeah, that's and that's so awesome. But now moving on, one of the reasons why I. I wanted to ask Cassie to come back on is because I had a, I had an off day where I and I mean I'm extremely busy with this podcast and with my normal job but I had one night where I was completely off and I said hey you know that guest that I had on I knew that she sang but I hadn't really heard anything from her vocals so I looked up her YouTube channel and everyone I'll leave a link to all that stuff down below and I heard some of her songs and I was like oh my god I completely under researched her the first time that we had her on so I got to definitely have her back on to talk about that but have you been doing anything singing wise during your prep or has, have you ta- has that been on the complete back burner? Totally, unfortunately, on the back burner. Prep is a time, life consuming thing. And yeah, singing, like my brother and I have played a couple little shows here and there on prep, but you're just, you're so exhausted. You're so tired. You're so, you know, you it, and with prep, it's like you're in or you're out. There, you're either 110% in or you're just don't bother. So unfortunately, music and singing has been um, kind of left behind for now. Um, but, you know, I'm still every day I'm singing, like whether it's in the house or the shower or here and there. Um, even when I was working those nights, like I was always singing to the baby. And um, even uh, with the school shift, because of the new the day shift that I transitioned to, uh, I was looking after a child in school. And she found out I sang and, and uh, on days where it was raining and the recess would be indoors. And if I knew it was going to rain, I'd bring my ukulele in and just sing a bunch of Disney songs. And that was a lot of fun. And like actually doing that made me really, really, really miss playing. So once this preps over and, and I'm kind of in my improvement season, uh, I definitely want to put a bit more focus back on music. I was going to say, if only they had a talent portion to these bodybuilding shows, you could go out there with the <laughs> ukulele and, and play. But yeah, everyone, I highly recommend you go and check it out. And I always just got to say, I'm a huge Legends of Zelda Ocarina of Time fan. So she has a song where she does, she plays the, um, the the song that everyone hears when you walk in before when you pick up the sword for the first time and that's uh, oh, it, um, the, the te- uh yeah. temple the temple of time temple yeah. of time yeah yeah I uh, everyone has their own Christmas family tradition but ours me and my two brothers we spend basically all of Christmas Eve and most of Christmas Day playing Ocarina of Time on the old Nintendo sixty four that we hook up to one of the TVs that we have downstairs but yeah when I saw that she had the video of that I was like okay I, I definitely need to listen to this and her smells like Teen Spirit video or her her song for that is I mean it's just absolutely breathtaking so anyone out there who Who's interested in that go and definitely check that out but now i like to ask these final questions before we wrap things up here so out of all the things i mean since you have been through this i love to ask these questions to the people that have competed if there's one thing that you could change about the sport of bodybuilding what would be one thing that you'd like to see changed it's kind of tough because i feel like I'm just so new 
to bodybuilding that there's so much that I've yet to explore and discover. Like even from my first prep to now, following all the pros, following everything, I would say that um, I wish there is like, especially for, I can only really speak to my category, really. Um, I wish there's a little bit more consistency in what they were looking for. I feel like it's always changing and it just makes life so much harder. I know they're coming out with the wellness division. NPC pros are to begin that next year. Uh, so essentially it's there. I think they're just trying to do a bit of a crossover between bikini and figure, which will help a little bit because I feel like for out of nowhere, bikini just became this shredded like look that was, you know, like was like people were coming in extremely lean. And then now all of a sudden you look at all the pros who are winning the pro shows. They're super soft not soft, but like definitely not as harsh lines, like, you know, fuller, fuller muscles, fuller glutes, everything like that. Like you're just, it's almost like out of nowhere, there's just like a shift. So now you see now that the pros are doing it, the regional shows are now starting to be like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We want that too. We want that too. And I definitely noticed that at Coburg that all the girls who won overall, like the overall girl who won uh, everyone who was winning first in their categories were all quite soft so um I guess like a little bit more consistency would be nice um and actually you know what I did think of one thing sorry that that's really important to me and that would be um I wish competitors would be less scared to show off-season bodies and the reality of off-season because I think that it's really dangerous to be showing um, like to be portraying bodybuilding as, you know, stage lean physique all year round, like that's not the reality. And, and I'm, if, and if that is your reality, like, I hope that you are getting, you know, assessed by your physician constantly to make sure that your levels are okay, because like, that is not safe. And I think that right now there's a big movement right now with body positivity and anti uh, diet culture and everything like that. Like there's just a huge, you know, emerging, you know, uh, there's it's become a concern really with uh, many people and, and it's a big hot topic right now in social media. And I think that, you know, even for me, I've already started following girls who are in their improvement season so that my feed's not just going to be full of girls who only post competition photos because I know when I'm in my off season and I'm going to be a little bit heavier and I'm not going to be really shredded. That's going to probably really hurt. It's going to, you know, it's going to make you look at yourself and you know, you, cause when you define yourself as a bodybuilder and then you think that the whole world and all the people who follow you on social media also, def- you know, are defining you as a bodybuilder, you almost feel ashamed of yourself when you're not, at your leanest or you're not providing the definition of what you think a bodybuilder should be. So I guess I would say more, more realness in that part of bodybuilding would be nice, especially for women. Cause I find men can get away with it a little bit more easily. Guilty. (laughs) With women, as soon as there's weight gain or anything like that, it's like, yeah, yikes. Yeah. It's always like, Oh, you're kind of letting yourself go a little bit. Hey, yeah. 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 I, like no this is actually like my healthy weight and this is what i need to build more muscle or to to improve you know because bodybuilding is about building your body literally bodybuilding you know so and i cannot thank you enough for saying that cuz that's one of the reasons why i always love to ask that question to all my guests you know cuz that's the big misconception so yeah and that's that would be, be so great too if people were a lot more honest about that and i always got to say when you said the people that do stay shredded 99% of the time, it's because, you know, they're not going to last that long in their career because of that. But then they always have those 1% genetic freaks that I just, I hate with yeah. an absolute passion. I had one of them on the podcast where I was like, there's no way you, that's like, that's just like natural and that you're doing it like this. But she showed, she had a photo right next to her conveniently when she was like 10 years old and she had like an eight pack. And I was like, okay, this is, this is BS. I was like, come on. You're, I was like, we're done here. I'm done talking to you. Like you're, this is, this is embarrassing, but yeah. So everyone out there. Yeah. I mean, it's just, Oh just my gosh, I should that. show you, like, I was a heavy kid, like, my cousin literally, and I don't think she'll care that I'm sharing this, <laughs> but, like, she just sent me this photo the other day, like, that's not bad, I, that's not bad, no, but, like, I was, I was pretty, like, 
I was a little on like the like the like I was a hockey player, okay? I was like pretty husky, you know, like pretty they say like big boned. Like people would call me that all the time, which is like the nice way of saying like, yeah, you got a little cushion for the cushion. For- uh, I always think about South Park where Cartman always goes, I'm not fat, I'm big boned every single time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that was literally me. Like I was like, you know, but um, so I definitely do not have the genetics to stay lean. I would say now that I've seen myself lean, I do feel more comfortable in a leaner state than when I was bulkier before I started this journey. So in my off season, I think like, my goal will be to uh, lean bulk, I guess, is I, if that's the proper term we use. I'm not sure. I don't know if that just doesn't make sense. I've it's, pre- it's prep brain. It's prep brain. Essentially everyone, so, just yeah. like building muscle, but trying to also stay within a certain range that is reasonable for how I feel comfortable in my clothes and in my body, which for me is on a bit of the leaner side. Um, and I know as a natural athlete, it might take me a lot more time to build muscle because I'm not just like, throwing on and eating in a crazy surplus. But to me, that is, it's worth being happy and comfortable with myself to not trigger my body dysmorphia, to not trigger my mental health further, like to just stay happy with myself, you know? So, but that's also why I'm like reaching out to people like Celeste and, and things like that, because it's always nice to have a second pair of eyes and someone to kind of like, you know, someone to kind of step in and give you some extra tools and tricks and things to have on your utility belts of life to get you through the tough days. So, well, I always say people reach out to make sure that you do that because I mean, that's just such important advice. I think, you know, just to be able to reach out to people because it can, it can just be so helpful. But lastly, now, if anyone out here listening to this is thinking about maybe trying to compete or get into shape to get to go on a prep, what would be one piece of advice that you really think that they should take into consideration before they think about or before they really start going into the process? Do your research. It looks super cool when you're on Instagram and you're like, ah, yeah, like bodybuilding so great and stuff. But it's like before I even considered a show, I did my like. I did like like a full month worth of like literally watching YouTube videos of girls who have done videos on their prep journey. I looked at a lot of forums, like, you know, accredited forums. I had a big, huge sit down with my coach and we made sure that our ideals, our philosophies, everything lined up, that there wasn't any discrepancies in terms of like things that he was going to get me to do that I was like, no way am I doing that, especially being in the healthcare profession. You know, there was, you know, I didn't want to feel uncomfortable. You want to make sure that whoever, like, I'm a firm believer that if you're going to do a show, get a coach, like 100%. And then with that, you do your research on your coach. Because, you know, just because this coach has all these great athletes, and they're pumping out their pro cards, doesn't mean you're going to going to connect with them well and if you don't connect well with your coach you're shooting yourself in the foot because your coach is going to become your best friend whether you like it or not because they are going to be the person you're probably going to talk to most and confide in the most during your your prep i mean i couldn't agree more because we've had so many people come on that you know their first show they didn't have a coach and just the struggles that they have to go through. But yeah, again, everyone go and find a coach. And again, everyone, we cannot thank Cassidy enough for coming on again and talking to us. I mean, it was so, so great having you on and we wish you nothing but the best in your show in Barrie. And if anyone out there is in the Barrie area and wants to go July 27th, I believe it was, is the show. So everyone go and check that out. And then again, like I said, we cannot thank you enough and I'll leave a link to all of her stuff down below. Everyone go and give her a follow, go and follow Celeste's podcast. I'll leave a link down to that. And again, Cassie, we cannot thank you enough for coming back on. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me, Ryan. It's been absolutely amazing. And uh, yeah, I'll definitely keep you posted on everything and I'll uh, be uh, making sure to plug you in as well. Oh, absolutely. I really appreciate that. And again, and again, you guys, everyone go and give her a follow. And this is Ryan Johnson, DD on the spot signing out. Have a great day, everyone.